about it each year um, and improving with that. So. Yeah, it's ever developing, isn't it? Uh, now, this is an event that's been around at the World Championships for a little while. Uh, World Champions, of course, China. C2 men, 500 metres. So the A final will be coming up shortly. Um, and yeah, this will be a really interesting uh, line up this and also a really interesting event at the World Championships because it was Olympic up until 2008 when China won the gold medal then. It's not been Olympic, but in Paris, it's going to enter back into the Olympic program. So it'll be really interesting. It's obviously developing, becoming more and more competitive as time goes on. Uh, so there you can see the lineup. We'll have France in lane one, Loic Lennard and Adrian Bart. Now, Adrian Bart, he was C1 1,000 metres, so in the individual event over 1,000 metres, he was fourth in Tokyo. It's the closest that the French came, in fact, to winning a medal at Tokyo, which was a little bit of a surprise. Lithuania, Henry Kastostautas and Vadim Kurabov will be in two. The Poles, Glasnov and Barniak in three. Now, they were the silver medalers, medal winners in the C2 1000 meter event. There you can see the Spanish, Tatiano Garcia and Pablo Martinez, who won the World Cup in Hungary over this distance. Young crew, really quick, fastest qualifiers here, so watch out for them. Italians are going well. We saw that in the men's K1 200 meters, winning the gold medal. So, Nikolai Krakin and Daniel Santini. Now, was the Krakin brothers who uh, were finalists at the World Cup in Hungary. Now it's Krakwin joining up with Santini. They're in the middle of the echelon. Lane six, the Hungarians, Jonathan Haidu and Adam Fekete. Silver medalists from both the Russian and Hungarian World Cup earlier in the season. Russian Canoe Federation, Viktor Melantev and Vladislav Chebota. They will be in lane seven. And Vitaly Vigelis and Andriy Rybachok from Ukraine. Bronze medalists from the World Cup in Zeged earlier in the season. They'll be in lane eight. And the Czech paddlers, Yuri Minerik and Yuri Zalobil, they will be in lane nine. So once you get in the Olympic program, you see the sport develop rapidly, don't you? I remember speaking to Alexander Nikonorov, who's the coach of Ed McKeever, saying just every year it got quicker and quicker and more and more competitive as the event got closer and closer to the Olympics and probably see the same with this. Yeah, definitely. It's just uh, it's the pinnacle, pinnacle of our sport, isn't it? So the second that something's in the games, everyone's on it. Yeah, they're desperate to get into it, aren't they? And we talk about the pinnacle of the sport. It's always an interesting one, isn't it? That uh, the Olympic Games is kind of a showcase for the sport. But the World Championships, this is where you get more votes. This is where sometimes, maybe not in Olympic year, because it's such an unusual year, but it'll actually be more competitive than the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, definitely qualifying for the Olympics in, in canoe sprint is uh, it's quite difficult. <laughs> there's, a, there's an understatement if ever heard yeah. one, Dennis, and You did incredibly well. Um, to qualify and, and also perhaps why so many countries put all their eggs in the K4 basket to try and qualify the K4 and then they can get the K2s and the K1s yeah. uh, K1s and K2s out of that um, but World Championships has been around for so long the World Championships hasn't it and uh, although yes Olympics are an amazing showcase for the sport the World Championships is a fantastic and event and got such great tradition as we have here in Denmark where we are about to start for the men's C2 500 meters A final. All the way smoothly, that's a good shot to see, just the bows moving nicely of the boat there, maybe just really powering it there. Well, difficult to say at the minute. Uh, lane six away well, lane six would be the Hungarians. Haidu and Fekete, not always the best starters from them. Um, normally good finishes, they both paddle um, quite well, not always, they quite often paddle on the same side. Uh, we're now entering sort of the, the middle part of the race step. So 500 metres, you know this well. Um, what are they going to be doing now at this point in the race? Now they've got over the start, they're settling into their rhythm. Uh, yeah, I think rhythm is the key word there. Uh, it can be quite difficult in a crew boat to to get that down. Um, but, but once you get it and you can you can feel the boat kind of gliding and, and maybe moving ahead of other boats. That's when you can really get a little bit of confidence and, um, and bring that into the last 200, which we're coming into now. We are indeed, and uh, 
building the rhythm. That takes years and years of paddling together as well quite often, doesn't it? And when you feel it, then you've got to go with it. And of course, your confidence is brimming. Now, whose confidence is brimming here? Possibly Hungarians going very, very well. The Russian Federation, they were quickest to the 250 meter split. We'll see now. We've got the Hungarians right up there. The Italians are going well, and maybe the Italians just leading at the moment. We could see another Italian gold medal. It's going to be hard fought because the Hungarians are really pressing now towards the finish line. The final few strokes, and it looks to be like Italy are going to take another gold medal. Hungary in second, and lane seven, that is the Russian Canoe Federation in third. Wow. So the small Italian crowd just down there. Uh, below us, below the finish tower, they are jumping up and down with delight. Krakowin and Santini take the second gold medal for Italy in a short space of time this morning at the World Championships. Great result for them. They Don't weren't... Think Santini can quite believe it there. <laughs> no? Well, that's great, isn't it? I mean, I think that they weren't leading at the split, whether it was the Russian Canoe Federation who were leading, but of course they built the rhythm and maybe, like you said, Debs, just the confidence was really flowing and they felt it and they moved together in perfect unison and a decent margin ahead of the Hungarians with, as I say, the Russian Federation taking third. And maybe that's what it's about, building that confidence, feeling the rhythm, and then when you feel it, you go with it. So you can see the lock onto the blade there. So important we talked about that being actually very similar to the kayak, didn't we? And probably crew boats as well, the leg drive, so important to make that work together. Yeah, definitely. Looks like um, a bit of a, like it was going to be a bit of a blanket finish further up the race, but the Italians really took it out there at the end. So what does it take? How are they doing that? Is that to do with the rhythm? Is that to do with just digging deeper than the other paddlers or? I mean, I'm probably not the best person to talk about uh, C2 500 with them, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's just it's a really difficult distance to get right, but I think if you if you work out how to do it, it's uh, you're going to be up there in the medals. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, no doubt. And of course, like you say, you're not an expert in in canoe, but canoe and kayak crew boats, it's a similar game in that making it work in, in harmony, and you have to have that synchronisation. Now you can see Italy taking the gold medal ahead of Hungary, only 0.3 behind, and then the Russian Federation in third place.